Hello, welcome back to 10 Minute Science, where we pick a topic, we dissect it, we dive in, and we learn about something amazing in 10 minutes or less. Today we're gonna to talk about lasers, what they are, how do they work, and applications. Why have they basically changed the world? Now, first of all, know that lasers are an invention that was enabled by quantum theory, quantum mechanics. So if anybody ever tells you that quantum mechanics or advanced science has no use, you need to let them know that the entire internet runs on quantum mechanics. All right, that's uh, all right. That's yeah. news to me. You know, I thought it ran on electricity, really, yeah, you know, yeah, voltage. That's what I yeah, electronics. Electronics, yeah, not quantum. Yeah. What's all this quantum theory bullshit? Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, that they've just created. And they want it to be real. And in the in the in the world in the, in the real world yeah right? so real. and one way they make it real is by getting people like this guy to say to his viewers that your all your electronics are based on quantum theory sure yeah I think well I think what they mean by quant quantum is a g generic term I think quantum is a generic term for very 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 small. Oh, possibly, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think quantum is. It's uh, it's just a generic term for but microscopically no, it, tiny. But then how can you... The have smallest a, you can ever get kind of thing. But then how can you have a quantum leap? <clears throat> because it's it's, when done, it, it's when, carried out by very small things, like like a proton, for example. Oh, oh over long distances. Over long distances, for oh, example. Right, you can okay, have a quantum yeah. leap, yeah. I mean, that's what I think, you know, off the top of my head, obviously, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, this guy, you know, this is where we enter the dream world, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> because in the video, um, the question is, how does the laser work? Yeah. And as we get into didn't our say, video, didn't we'll say, start to realise that it doesn't work in the way, really, that these guys portray it to be. And also, he says it's a 10-minute ten, ten video, didn't he? And yeah, it, but it's 22 20, minutes long. 22 minutes long, absolutely, of course. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm. yeah, that's because he wants to put in, he's got to include... Well, he feels he's got to include the bullshit about the protons and all of the electrons. Oh, and the orbits, the s orbits, and the oh, subatomic right, yeah. particles. All the all of the dream, the theory, the th the dream, the dream, the dream, the dream, the dream. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yes, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions. Because, 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 because. a lot of people dislike having other people's views and opinions. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Yeah, that's so true. A lot of people do dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Just, but I'm sure yeah. they're getting used to hearing other people's views and opinions by now. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the advent of YouTube and uh, the explosion of people being able to go onto a platform and air their views and opinions and mm. express them freely. Yeah, but the problem is that you can hear so many people's different views and opinions, you don't know whether you're coming or going. And you don't know which one is right or wrong. Absolutely, yes. But or, but it all boils down to your, a lot of it boils down to your imagination and what you want to believe in. You see, Peter and myself, we don't believe in anything. No. Or we try very hard not to believe in anything because, well, you can either come to know something Absolutely. Or you can come to don't know something. You don't know something. Now, when you don't know something, that's when the belief comes into it, comes into play. Yeah. Because you believe something, you can believe something to be true. Yeah, but the belief means that you're wanting something You to want be something true. to be true. true. Yeah, you're trying to justify yeah. the existence of something, even though it's untrue. Absolutely, yeah. But this is where man... Uh, is able to uh, use his imagination, create dreams, and bring them into the real world oh, as best he can. Mm -hmm. He does that through his teachings, through his um, uh, things that he, his technology, things that he yeah. makes and manufactures. You know, he does that an awful lot. But it doesn't. None of what he does changes the real world. No. The real world sh remains the same. Yeah. Throughout all of man's existence, yeah. it's remained the well, same. It's, it's been like that guy at the beginning when he said how lasers have changed the world. And you think, 
No, they haven't. Well, they haven't because the the real world hasn't changed, changed at all. all. The real world has remained the same. The sun still shines. Absolutely, plants still grow. The You're sky. breathing the same air as what you were Clouds. what you were breathing in, say, three, four, five hundred years, years ago. ago. Go yeah. to a top of top of a mountain, for example. Go to Swiss Alps. Or Swiss go into Alps. the Swiss Alps. You're breathing the same kind of air as what it was. A thousand years, years ago, ago. two thousand years, years ago. ago, you know, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. The only thing that changes essentially is man's fabricated world, man's mm. world where he can make better cars, where he can make better tools, better pieces of equipment, better yeah. computers, better forms of communication. Well, but then you can argue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Are the cars better? Well, the cars, well, um, they still get you from A to B. So well, in sure. some cases, they aren't better. Yeah, but he's uh, man's developed motorway systems, for example, road networks, which were a lot better when, say, Henry Ford was around with his Model T. So, so he's made his journeys more enjoyable. Well, he's made his journeys more economical. Oh, right. And yeah. also with flights, you can fly to further destinations than oh, well, yeah. many, many years ago. Um, so, you know, his, a lot of has improved in man's world, transportation, communication. But um, the people haven't changed. But people haven't changed, and essentially neither has, neither has man's world because man still lives in buildings. He still mm. has transportation. Yeah. Many years ago, he was using horses yeah. or donkeys, but now he's driving cars, getting yeah. into planes. You know, they, were still, had, they still had boats many years ago, didn't yeah. they? Nothing's changed. Nothing's uh, changed. Still, still on the water, you know, <coughs> blah, blah, blah. Anyway, come on. So, we've got to get on. There we go. A lot of people seem to think that man's world is brilliant, but in my understanding, I think it could be a lot better. Absolutely. It could be an awful lot better. Well, the people. The people. The people in it can be a lot better. Yeah, because when you actually look at man's world, you think it's too good for people. Well, I think it's too good for people. I think think people ruin uh, what what people have on off, what society can offer people. You can put down nice... In a modern world. You can lay down on your pavement some nice paving slabs for the people to walk on. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that wonderful? And all they'll do... And all people will come (laughs) along and they'll just leave chewing gum all over it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And be sick all over it, drop their food all over it. Drop their food all over it, yeah. this This is what people do. People ruin things. Absolutely, anyway. Mankind ruins things. things. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, anyway, let's get on and... So, uh, what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for for today then, Peter? Well, we've got a lot to to get through, actually. We're going to talk about a bit about rainwater and uh, algae in uh, fish tanks. Oh, a little bit, yeah, sure. We're going to have a look at uh, Parapolylogic asked us to look at a DIY liquid nitrogen generator. So, we're going to have a look at that. Uh, We're going to show... We're going to revisit the video about the lasers... The, oh, yeah, the, la- the lasers, uh, the quantum man. We're going to have a look at a Globy who's well in his head, well in his head because he well, knows. It, well, he's living in his imagination. He, he's going to explain how he knows the Earth rotates. Yeah, wow. We're going to have a look at uh, an electric polarised, pol- electric polarity in air. Oh, right, yeah, the Thanks electrical, gr- well, the, we're, oh, we're going to revisit we're going to the revisit potential. Yeah, in we'll there. revisit we'll atmospheric electricity. The idea. Yeah, we, yeah, we've got some uh, steel wall demonstrations to show people more, and we've also got some demonstrations we've got to show on carbon, on uh, uh, activated heating, carbon, he, and heating, heat, oh, heating, uh, heating activated, activated carbon. carbon. Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, sure. So we've got a lot to get through, and we've also got to thank. Johnny M. Johnny M. Yeah, thanks ever so much, Johnny M, for your... Uh, Big thank you. Cause it, it, for coming over and meeting us. Came to visit us. Um, what was that? Thursday, wasn't it? Thursday, yes. We went, went out, had a nice meal. Yep. And uh, enjoyed his company. Sweet. So, and, hope you got back south. As well. I hope you got back home safely. And uh, yeah. great stuff. Big thumbs up. Big thumbs up. So, uh, next, so what do we need to do then? We could quickly talk about Steve Thorne and his fish tank. Yeah, uh, now uh, we we often we suggested many many moons to go in a video that um, it might it may be better to actually use uh, rainwater in a fish tank yeah. as opposed to using uh, water from the tap because water from the tap contains algae. It's a source of algae, and yeah. it also contains a lot of rubbish um, that really isn't isn't very Help, help, uh, 
isn't very good or healthy for fish. So we suggested using rainwater because rainwater falls into ponds, yeah, and the fish swim around in ponds and lakes and stuff. Makes sense, doesn't it? Really, yeah, it makes sense. Right? Yeah. So, so he he actually uh, uh, has filled up his fish tank with rainwater, and so far so good. Mm. So hopefully within a few. Uh, a few months or so, six months or some something like that. He'll be able to feedback. From He'll be able to feedback, really well. and that it's doing really well, and he he doesn't get hardly any problems with anything, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah, and uh, because because then it will make me realise that yeah, you know, put put in rainwater to fill up your fish tank. Yeah, so the signs are very positive indeed. Absolutely, of course. So thank you ever so much, Steve, for letting us know on your update there. Yeah, there we go. So let's have a look at uh, Parry Par- Par- Logic liquid uh, nitrogen generator. Oh, no, a liquid nitrogen generator. <laughs> now, Para Polylogic asked us to look at this video here. By Applied Science, liquid nitrogen generator. Because this video, if you only watch this video, a lot of people will look at it and think, ah, oh, so that there's a device that's actually splitting the nitrogen from the oxygen. Because they all think, they all think ox- the air has constituents it's of oxygen, nitrogen, nitrogen. argon, Blah, 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 blah. And whenever you see equipment... And we think that's wrong. Absolutely. And whenever you see equipment like this, you think, oh, this man must be clever. Intelligent. Well, not, well, not really. Intelligent, clever, and good at what he does. But he can still be stupid. stupid. Because absolutely. he thinks the air has constituents, constituents of the oxygen and the nitrogen. Yeah. Absolutely. So he, he exp- he's actually- and he doesn't realise that what he's doing in his setup here is actually making nitrogen. It's actually making nitrogen. nitrogen. This That's is what he's doing. So he's got a, a variety of uh, pieces of equipment on the table there. Uh, Let's start with his. He's got uh, there. He's got uh, a well, to, the, to the. He's the got his compressor at there. The front is his compressor. compressor. A bit similar to what you get on a fridge, basically. Yeah, got his compressor, and that feeds up the air, the compressed air, into uh, some filters. He's got some carbon filters there, and he's. Oh, it goes in these first. Oh, yeah, it, goes, it takes out the water, doesn't it? Oh, which could also be carbon. Oh, yeah, it could be. I don't, I don't know. Carbon. But uh, then he's got... Well, you I might know, as well play it. I know these things have got... I know these. this is a picture. Wait there, let's have a little look. Oh, he's pointing out. So there's his compressor. Put the sound on. Oh, OK, wait there. Let's put the sound on and listen to him talk over what he's got. Oh, are we ready? Listen. The system has to run day and night, and I didn't want the compressor to be noisy running at night. So these compressors are super quiet. This came out of a a small air conditioner or maybe a refrigerator. And the inlet is here. So it's just got a filter just to, you know, filter out large dust particles. And then the high pressure air, which is wet and then uh, filled with oil as well from the compressor comes out here and goes through this setup. So there's a pressure release valve. Uh, Since this compressor doesn't have, um, it's not easy to turn it on and off. And so if it's under pressure, it doesn't like to start. So what I did is I had a spring-loaded relief valve just to keep the pressure constant going into this whole system. It's probably about 100 PSI or 120 or something like that. Uh, The first stage is just to get out a lot of water and oil mist here. And then there's a regulator to step it down to something, you know, 80, 80 PSI or something just to to get a constant pressure from there. And then the uh, semi-dry and semi-wet 80 PSI air goes into this whole setup. And even though it looks complicated, it's really just a bunch of filters over and over again. So there's an oil coalescing filter. um, And then these I've actually packed with carbon to try to get more of the oil mist out. And the cylinders in the back are filled with silica gel to dry the air. So this was kind of a welding project. And, um, you know, I I had some, I learned how to do an O-ring gland on the mill and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of these projects just involve building things to practice building things. I'm sure I could have bought a commercial air dryer uh, for much cheaper and, and quicker, but you know, then you don't learn anything. Um, the one thing I did learn uh, is that it's, it doesn't actually get the air very dry with just silica gel. So to get really, really dry air, you either need a special drying membrane or a cryogenic um, freezer, which you need liquid nitrogen for, so that doesn't really work that well. Anyway, after going through this uh, convoluted path of filters, we go through an indicator uh, glass. So this has silica gel with a, uh, an indicator that turns pink when it's exhausted. And as you can see, it's completely pink now because this thing has been sitting on the shelf for a while. Um, this would let me know if I needed to open this up and recharge the silica gel that's inside there. 
and you can recharge it just by putting it in the oven uh, to drive off the moisture. And then it, you know, it acts like a moisture sponge. Following this, we go through the actual nitrogen separation membrane. And so this is a really tricky part of the whole system. I probably spent as long on eBay looking for a nitrogen separation membrane as I did looking for the cryo cooler, which is kind of the heart of this whole system. Uh, you can find these industrially and they're actually quite large. I mean like, you know, a four foot long bundle that's maybe six inches in diameter uh, meant for industrial use. But finding them small like this is, is tricky. And the way it works is that uh, you know, 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen air goes in at high pressure on one side. And as the air molecules drift through the tubes, the oxygen tends to diffuse through the tube, whereas the nitrogen does not. So by the time you get to the other side, the uh, gas that's coming out the end of the tubes is nitrogen enriched, and the stuff that comes out the side of the tubes is oxygen enriched. I, d I did notice uh, how he said, how he, how he mentioned the air molecules oh, well, yeah. as yeah. they go into the thing. He, yeah. he, but there's no such thing as an air, air molecule. molecule. Yeah. There's yeah. none whatsoever. What I found interesting was, you know, was when he was talking about the silica gel within the two canisters, and he, he's saying that it doesn't remove all the moisture in the yeah. air. <clears throat> yeah, it still leaves moisture. demonstrates that it's very, very, it's, well, it's impossible to remove all the moisture. Yeah, sure. Within his system. Sure. But anyway, we don't want to focus on that. We just want to focus on the nitrogen. The nitrogen. And the it's idea made... that the... the, the that the separator separates this little small device separates this membrane the oxygen from the nitrogen. nitrogen yeah now we think that's all rubbish we think uh, what goes in is <clears throat> um, one thing as it were air air which has a bit of moisture in it a bit of moisture and it goes through this uh, this membrane the nitrogen generator and what comes out is a nitrogenous air, air. Mm. That's that's how, that's what we think, and even it, the uh, one of these has a it's kind of like a um, and like not like an overflow, but it has a little hole where hole yeah where he says the oxygen comes out, yeah. but we think it's to, that's just it, if you tested it, you wouldn't it wouldn't relight a flame no, it wouldn't relight a flame at all. It wouldn't show any properties of oxygen because so, you've got to remember that prior to the airstream going into this this little device. He passes the airstream, which is compressed yeah, sure. through carbon. Through carbon, yeah. He had two carbon filters there. And we all know that if you push, if you pass air, especially compressed air, through carbon, sure. The carbon will carry will be carried along. Yeah, very within very the tiny, tiny, tiny particles of that carbon uh, will uh, be carried along. Carbon will be carried along with the airstream. With the airstream. Absolutely, this is and this is and something if you get, that uh, if you get up, a lot of uh, people fail to realise, isn't just it? Just quickly get up the um, Wikipedia page on nitrogen separator, nitrogen generator, oh, and, or nitrogen generator, nitrogen generator. Here we go. Oh no, well, yeah, there, there we go. go. Nitrogen generator. So they yeah, use a variety of methods to uh, absorb, separate, concept, yeah, absorb. separate nitrogen. One of them, which membrane is, technology. It's this one, one of them. Here. Yeah, one of them that is most common is PSA. PSA, which is pressure swing adsorption, by using carbon, yeah, molecular, carbon molecular sieves. Yeah, the nitrogen generators use CMS, which is carbon molecular sieve, which nitrogenizes the airstream. Sure, absolutely, of course. But membrane technology, gas is, separation concept, which is what this guy's talking about in his, which is what this guy's, set. yeah, basically, this is this is what he's got here. Yeah. He's got a flux distribution inside the fiber. Oh. It's a lot, a lot of fibrous. It's a fibrous material that has a lot of, a lot of pores, pores in, where the well, where it's alleged nitrogen could pass through. But as we see in this diagram here, it has a hole on the side, where the um, where where the o oxygen yeah, is because, because they're passes. saying that the oxygen is able to pass through the membrane to the outer extremities so of the tube and then it comes and out the side leaves the <clears throat> leaves through that sure so we, we've clearly got we there's there's clearly well here there's clearly well if you've got if you've got the equipment you can demonstrate whether we're right or whether mainstream is yeah. right Will it in that line? air has constituents yeah. all you have to do is get yourself a, a, a glowing splint and just hold it or capture some of the O2 that's allegedly coming out of this membrane 
yeah, mm. and actually um, see if it will relight. See if it will re- relight glowing splint. I think it won't. I think it won't because it's okay. exactly the same as a, a air oxygen concentrator that exhausted the same air as what a patient would be delivered to yeah. the through the tube. Yeah. But, and our view is that you're there for So you get a nitrogenous air coming yeah. out of this little hole yeah. where it's alleged oxygen comes out. Yeah, basically, because you're, you're, you're squeezing the, the fuck out of it. Yeah, the, the well, air. you can't really say because that. It's, 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 you're compressing the air and pushing it well, but, into yeah. so much small, fine... You're nitrogenizing the air. Hollow fibres. You're actually nitrogenizing yeah, it. You're is, making it stale. You're, you're making the air stale, stale simply by processing it. So that's what essentially you're doing. You're processing the air in its entirety, okay, and, it, and it's being yeah. processed through and the that, membrane and it comes out a nitrogenous air. Yeah. And there's uh, Veritasium did a similar video. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, Veritasium did a, a very similar video, which is this one here. Let's get rid of that. A uh, long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I don't want to hear it. Don't it, but what he but he has, uses he uses quite a large industrial. He used a very yeah. They've separator. got a cryo cooler there. They've got some there. Wait there. there oh, there, there, there he is. There. Wait there. So he's, he's it goes through a moisture trap. Goes through a moisture that collect, traps all the moisture. Remove the water vapor. Okay, We've got the filter, and then the hose goes into his uh, nitrogen it's, membrane. Yeah. Now you can see the hole there. Uh, where allegedly the oxygen, yeah. there's the hole where the oxygen comes With, out, and yeah, and, and you, you can know. see the fibres inside. But in my understanding, that's just like a that acts like a pressure release valve. Yeah, I, I, that's I, what yeah. I reckon that is. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, it just acts like a pressure release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you might find, I mean, all this is bollocks. Yeah, all this is total rubbish. Yeah. It allows oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water vapour. Well, wait there. To diffuse out much faster than nitrogen. That's just total rubbish. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You get the same product going in, and then you really get the same product coming out. Yeah. Yeah. It, you get air going in. You get a nitrogenous air coming, coming out. out. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you where you, where it comes out, whether it's the side or the or the end, you get the same. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very similar. Yeah, it's like years ago. Many years ago, they used to. Um, uh, cellars in houses were very rarely used, and some people would often go down into a cellar. Sure. After many years of it not being used, and found it difficult to breathe because the air had gone stale because of lack of motion, lack of motion, lack of. But it's <laughs> the it's the, the environment that's created that, not the. Not a the, constituent of air being taken out. Oh, because what would have happened with the oxygen? Yeah, if, no, you know, yeah, if there was yeah. if there was constituents. I mean, for anyone to think that the air has constituents of oxygen, nitrogen, you know, you're getting to a point where I'm getting to a point where I can literally say that you, you've got to have mental, mental health, health problems. problems. You do, yeah. You, you've got yeah. to have mental health problems because it's just it makes so much sense in the, when you're looking out when you're looking at the real world to think that air is just air. Yeah. Whatever yeah. air is, yeah, no, yeah. and there are not uh, constituents of oxygen, nitrogen. No, so science can't, science doesn't do proof. It can't yeah. prove that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Can't yeah. prove that claim. So people can only think it to be true. They can only believe it to be true. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, there we go. So let's have a go on our. Uh, so so now we found two ways in which you can nitrogenize the air. Mm. One using a carbon molecular sieve. sieve. And passing the air, an airstream or the airstream through that, yeah. or you can use this membrane, yeah, uh, which does the same kind of job. But essentially, what what is the key is that the two products will be slightly different. Yeah, they've got to be slightly different, different because they've both been processed in different ways. Yeah, yeah. They, so they can't be the same. Yeah, exactly, they still the same. might put out flame, and they still you still might not be able to breathe that airstream. But there could be other different properties they sure. have sure oh one those. of one thing one thing that we could argue or we could say and that is it would be interesting um with carbon if you had nitrogen um a nitrogenous air that was gained from carbon molecular sieve and you had it from this membrane technology and you just stored it mm. okay i reckon the the 
um, the membrane nitrogenized air will not last as long as the carbon molecular sieve produced nitrogenous air. Because you've still got the carbon in it. Because the carbon's still there. Mm. It's, I mean, it's worth it. See, th- this is what people should be doing, storing yeah. this gas or the, the nitrogenous air and then testing it after six months to see what it's or, like. Or what you could do, you could actually pass... Because it's possible it may revert... Well, if you're passing the nitrogen through this membrane, yeah. or sorry, the air through this membrane, it's possible yeah. that after a while, yeah. I don't know, however long, but it may return or revert back to air. Yeah. Breathable air. Breathable breathable yeah. air. Or you could actually pass the, the, the gas that's produced through... Uh, pressure swing absorption that's nitrogen pass that through sodium hydroxide oh yeah you could pass that through sodium hydroxide because that would contain carbon and the sodium hydroxide would trap the carbon or you could pass it through lime water or lime water yeah you could pass pass it through lime lime water water. possibly yeah the sodium hydroxide seems the gas that comes out the other end yeah sodium hydroxide so you're kind of reversing the the process of the pressure swing absorption, absorption. yeah by removing the carbon, carbon content yeah basically. sure you know the, I mean there's so much that so hopefully that you know in time we can actually do ourselves well hopefully yeah, anyway, you know, come on. but uh, you know they're all, it's all food for thought but at the end of the day it's you know for anyone to think that air has constituents of oxygen nitrogen and argon and other trace gases yeah. you know I'm, you know, it just doesn't jive with the real world. world yeah. It doesn't at all. Well, yeah. well, if you can't see the wood through the trees, that man is actually processing these And gases. making these products, you know, making you know, oxygen, you, you, making nitrogen you, from air. You, you like, you're living in dream world. Yeah, you're living in dream world. Let's go and join a dreamer who likes to talk about Who's that? orbits. Orbits, okay. How does a laser work? There we go. It's, uh, I don't know whether we want to talk about this, but yeah, this guy supposed to do like 10 minutes, but he he ends up doing it for 22. Well, you just want to show the bit at the beginning where well, he starts doing his, uh, you don't want what laser stands oh, for. Oh, wait a minute. So let's do properties, properties of lasers, energy levels. But en- en- oh, here oh, we energy. go. Yeah, here we go. Let's yeah. talk about, uh, let's, yeah, here we go. Let's break this up. Like, okay, let's listen to this. Here we go. So he's, he's, he's spoken about what a laser, the acronym, because it's an acronym, acronym, what it stands for. And he's talked about the three properties, monochromatic, coherent, and I can't remember, concentrated or something like that. Striated, isn't it? No, yeah. I, th- I don't know. I think it's a thin beam. It oh, doesn't right. splay out like a oh, normal okay. light, light beam. But so let's listen to um, him on the next section, which is all about um, energy, energy levels. levels. Okay, right, listen. We're going to talk about all of that. So these are the properties of a laser. Now we have to, to dig in a little deeper and... And you have to understand that all light that you see, all light comes from atoms where the electrons in the atoms are jiggling around, jumping into higher orbits and falling down into lower orbits. We call them energy levels. All right. So we're going to do a quick little cartoon of an atom, but just know that this is simplified. This is the nucleus where the protons and the neutrons live. And surrounding the nucleus, we have these different these different orbits. Now, it's not really like a solar system, but we do call it orbits because the first models of the atom were uh, uh, the first models of the atom were uh, thought of as a solar system. But we know now that it's really not quite like this. But we can still use this picture; it's still very instructive. Now, what we say is that there is a lowest orbit that we have. We call that the ground state, and electrons love to live in the ground state. So I'm going to call this an electron. And I'm going to put a little E there, it means electron. Now, I'm drawing the electron as a ball, but it's, it's not a ball. Electrons, we now know from quantum theory, they're all waves. But still, I can draw it as a ball so you have something to visualize a little bit better, a little bit easier to visualize. Now, imagine a red hot poker. You put a poker in the fire. <coughs> the poker has iron or whatever's in there, steel, and there's electrons surrounding those atoms. The fire is heating up the metal, and the electrons are jumping up into a higher energy state. When I say higher energy state, I literally mean that the electron jumps up into a higher orbit, and it temporarily lives in this location. It absorbs energy from the fire, and it goes up here. But you see, 
Electrons don't like to stay in the high energy states. They want to be as low as they can in a low energy state. So almost immediately, this electron goes back down into this ground state right here. And during the process of falling in like this, it, and again, it's not falling in like a planet. That's a quantum thing we'll talk about in more detail later. But you can imagine it doing something like this. But when this process of going to a lower energy state happens, then what happens? A photon is released. So this is a photon released, photon. And a photon is just a packet of light. And light is a packet of electromagnetic waves. A right, I think I've had enough of that. I mean, um, imagine. Yeah, imagine, yeah. Imagine. And then he says it, the, it's not a sphere. Yeah. You know, you know, how do you know? And then he uses imagine, uh, imagine a, a poke of red hot fire. I don't want to imagine a poke in a red hot fire. He's talking about these these orbits it's, and these yeah, no, nucleuses. Yeah, yeah. And no, he's talking about something that isn't a red hot fire. Absolutely. Where did, where did, how do they know all this rubbish? No, no, how, yeah, they yeah. can't prove it. No, no, can't yeah. prove it. Yeah. So it's just got it's got to come out of the imagination, hasn't it? Really, when you mm. think about it, nobody can prove uh, an atom exists or an electron yeah. exists. You know, you see a voltage beam in a Crookes tube, for example, and you think, well, it's made up of electrons. No, it's made up of what you think. Yeah, it's made up of what, yeah, but, yeah, you can call them what you want. Do yeah. you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. You know, yeah. I don't know. I, don't oh, know what it's, you it's, I can see bullshit. Yeah, I can. This you is know. bullshit. Yeah, it's made up of bullshit. It, yeah, the 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 Crookes tube, the voltage beam is made up of. You could call it volts, couldn't you? Really, oh, yeah. the voltage volts. beam is made up of volts. Yes, and a volt is a very tiny packet of electricity. Electricity, kind of. Yeah, you know. I mean, it, it it all depends how you want to do it. But look at looking at it from the quantum nature, or the quantum basis of stuff is just total it's dream world. It's, dream world. Yeah. It's it's. It's not, it's not tangible at all. It's intangible, untang, intangible. Yeah, you know, and yeah. it's got. We've got no room for it in that in our in our understanding of the real world. Yeah, you know, uh, atoms and yeah. But the, the the disappointing thing about this video and that is, is the the title is how does a laser work? But it doesn't actually show you a real laser. It doesn't show you a real laser. Of course, take yeah. it apart yeah, and actually sure. show to people through photos. Oh right, yeah, what sure. The parts are. Yeah, he even shows, um, he even tries to explain the um, the photon as it as it le the electron going up to a jumping. higher level, jumping. You know, and he does it this way. You'll like this. I, I think it's just ridiculous. You know what I mean? But here we go. Lower energy state. It's analogous to on Earth. This pin is at a higher energy state. And when I get closer to the Earth, it's in a lower energy state. Because if I drop it from here, you see, it can't really hit the ground very hard. So the energy, it's not much energy there, so it's, it's not hitting very hard when it's converted to kinetic energy. But if I drop it from a larger height, it has more potential energy, because when it hits the ground, it's going faster. So higher up... So, so he's, he's, uh, you so know, it's I, gravity I know. then. Gravity's doing it all then. Yeah, I, I, don't know, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know why he's using that as an analogy to demonstrate how um, electrons can move into a higher energy level or he, move to a lower energy it's, level. It's because he can't show you. And why the proton you. leaves. No, but it, he so, can't show you. It's a hallmark of science. Whenever you go into an education establishment and you learn science, they'll always show you things like this, like dropping the pen or his his idea of the red hot poker. Yeah. They'll always, or the gravity on the, the ball bear, the balls, Going around, they put a, they oh, have well, a, know, yeah. they have like a, a round trampoline or something, and they put a heavy weight in the middle, and then they spin marbles around oh, it I know, to yeah. show gravity yeah, and know, yeah. the gravitational attraction. And you think all of that, all of these demonstrations, is just techniques that science scientists and science people use in order to convince people that what they're saying is true. True, mm. yeah. and yet it's bullshit. It's yeah, total know, yeah. rubbish. Anyway, anyway, but the main point we why we're going on about this is that he spends half the video talking in a dream world. Yeah, you know, talking about that we're still there. We're in eight minutes forty three in, and all he's talking about is talking bullshit. about is bullshit, total and utter bollocks. Bullshit. Yeah, 
You know, he's even got uh, he's even got his wave. Oh, and then he says it's Wait a wave as well. So how can he portray that on his board, which is yeah. two dimensional yeah. and all that kind of stuff? So there's you got you you get your wavelength, all this kind of bullshit. Yeah, there, wait there. There's there's his wavelength. You know, I mean, anyway. But uh, it was it wasn't until and then he goes on. Look, there you go. Look, eleven, oh, well, yeah. 11 yeah. minutes in. Yeah, you know, and all he's talking about is bollocks, absolute pure bullshit. Yeah. And it goes right the way oh, through. And oh, and then now, and then now at fifteen, fifteen minutes in, let's let's listen to this, okay? Well, not all of it. Because well, we... not all of it, but just some of it. So, how do we um, cause this to to make a tight beam, which is what the laser actually is? And by the way, I know I've blown my ten minutes, but I apologize. I, I, some topics I just can't get, I can't squeeze them into ten minutes. So please forgive me. Here is the laser. He could do it in 10 minutes if we cut out the bullshit. Yeah. Part of the situation. What we do, and what they did, is they grabbed a cylinder of ruby, which is very carefully constructed. Right. So, so now he starts talking about the practical. The practical, the, the actual components of what of people have laser. done to make a laser. Yeah. And all he had to do in this talk is actually talk about this and talk about how it actually works. works. Yeah, that's all he had to do, you know. No, that's it. We don't need to watch oh, it anymore. It? Yeah, oh, is we that don't it? need to watch it because people can watch it. We'll put a link oh, in right, below. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite interesting to know how, what they did um, in order to create a laser beam, you know. But by the looks of it, they apply a, a high-voltage circuit around a piece of ruby yeah, Rod. which which ends up gl glowing, really, doesn't it? Basically, yeah, yeah. So you got you got your white light. Wasn't we going to talk about uh, white? Didn't we have something to talk about white light? Yeah, the circuit produces white light, which then goes through the ruby, which turns it to red. Absolutely, yeah. Because yeah, we think it's the ruby that actually creates the red light of a laser. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, of course. But because he's likening in here, the, the wire around the ruby to be like a flash bulb. Yeah, here, here you've got here, there you've got your ruby, uh, your cylinder of ruby, and then you've got a flash bulb around it, yeah. and it's flashing quite constantly, isn't it? Yeah. And um, or rapidly, and uh, that flash is basically being absorbed into the ruby and then ejected out because of the polished ends. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically, you know, and, you know, I mean, it's quite simple and straightforward, but it's surprising that you need the white light in order to generate the beam. Yeah, this is the key thing because a lot of people think that uh, white light is RGB green. made up of yeah. red, green, and yeah. blue, which we think is total rubbish. But you you do need the intensity within light, and that always has to be yeah. white light, always. But um, it doesn't explain how the flash bulb works. No, it doesn't explain how the flash bulb works. But that I don't think he needs to really. But uh, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, basically. But uh, in interesting from uh, 15 minutes onwards, obviously. Yeah, anyway, so we'll leave a link below if anyone's interested in looking at it so we can click sure. off. Sure, yeah. But we'll it was just, the video was just there to highlight how much BS he's got at the beginning of the video. Yeah, how much uh, in his, he's in his dream world. Well, yeah, so let's, let's move over to somebody else who's in a dream world. Which one? That one. Yeah. Oh, this is another person who's literally in a dream, dream world. world yeah. yeah. Another the science dream world because that's all yeah. science does is produces a dream for people yeah, to know, yeah, yeah. eat up, swallow up, and digest. Yeah. And the, the, the description of this video this time, flat Earth Pratt, flat Earth points refuted a thousand times, looks at the claim that the Earth doesn't rotate. Spoiler. Yes, it does. Right, okay. So, yes, it does. Well, it rotates. Right. So, let's let's just start the video. We might as well listen to a bit of the start, okay? Go on. Hi, everyone. Flat earthers say there's no evidence that the Earth is a spinning ball. We've covered the ball part. Now, let's address the spinning part. This is Fleur of Pratt. Flat Earth points refuted a thousand times. To make sure you don't miss anything, remember to subscribe and hit the bell. Here's how we know the Earth rotates. The Sun, the Moon, every star in the sky, all celestial objects appear to orbit the Earth in 24 hours, in addition to their motions relative to each other, that is. Isn't that a pretty amazing coincidence? I'd say it's amazing enough to warrant an explanation. Here's one. They don't. It's the Earth that rotates once around its axis every 24 hours. What's interesting about this hypothesis is that it makes predictions that are not made by the alternative. 
that the Earth is completely stationary and the universe revolves around it. Specifically, it means that the Earth acts as a non-inertial rotating frame of reference. And I just lost about half of you. Well, that's okay, I'll explain. In physics, we use coordinate systems to describe where and when events take place. A coordinate system has clearly defined axes and a clearly defined origin where the axes intersect. If I describe the same situation using a different coordinate system, events will no longer have the same coordinates. I'm describing the situation from a different frame of reference. It's not that one is more correct than the other. They are simply different ways of describing the same thing. It's not strange at all. Just consider how you and another person can both agree on where a wall is. It's one meter left of you and three meters right of him. Both of you are equally correct and you are in no way contradicting each other. You are describing the same thing from different points of view. If the coordinate system isn't accelerating, we call it an inertial frame of reference. Inertial frames are nice because they make physics very simple and straightforward. For example, if an object which is initially at rest starts to move in an inertial frame, I know it's because a force acted on the object. This is why Newton's laws of motion apply in such frames. In fact, that's how inertial frames are defined in Newtonian physics. An inertial frame is a frame where the law of inertia applies. That is... Yeah, anyway, anyway. Anyway, get, getting a bit boring there. But one, one thing that's interesting is that with this, within this video is that he brings in this term frames of reference. Because imagine that you're on a, a train, for example. And say I could be on a train and you could be actually watching... The, the train, train path. Yeah, sure. So I could say to myself, as I'm looking out the window, that I'm not moving. Yeah, that you're not moving. You're yeah, sure. moving. I'm, I'm moving, yeah. Because I've got a different frame of reference. Sure. But Pete here is saying that he's not moving. I'm moving. Sure. On the train. Because he's got a different frame of reference. But in reality, who's right? Well, in the real world, the train's moving. The train's moving. We all know the train all, is moving. Because the train is moving from one location to, to another. another. We it's all called know a the train. train. Yeah. <laughs> and it moves, and the people on board. And the train is moving the people on, on board. board. Absolutely, of course. It's called transportation. Station. So, is, um, so, so is, essentially, the, the, what that demonstrates is the frame of reference is true to the observer looking at the tra moving train. Hmm. Okay. So when we look at the night sky, the observer has to be right. That the Earth yeah. doesn't move, move and it's the stars yeah. and, the, and the sun, all but celestial they, objects that move. But they could argue from their frame. So you'd have to have a different frame of reference. So what frame of reference are they using to use sure. if you're wanting the Earth to rotate? So, so what frame of reference are they you using? You have to have an external frame of reference. What frame of reference are they using? Having a clue, just if if you, I don't want to play the video, but oh sure, one thing. Oh he, yeah, he talks he talks about here with trains, you know, trains, trains uh, moving. Well, yeah, trains but if moving. you if you scroll through when he gets to his math. Oh right, yeah, wait right there. Let's have a little. Yeah, uh, there you go. Wait right there. Look, See, you know, a, there's their uh, glory five. There's the hammer thrower. There you go. He's talking about. Yeah. And there he's talking about acceleration. Mm. That's what he's, Oh, here we go. He goes into his... Now, well, this gets even deeper now. Look, it goes into his And yet the thing is, the thing is, is that he himself, this guy, has not, um, has not been anywhere near a, a vantage point. So he can have a frame of reference to tell him, that tells him the Earth is moving, the Earth yeah. is rotating. He's never yeah. been there. Yeah. And yet he's saying that the Earth rotates. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's madness, isn't it? But because that would be the only way you can verify it. Sure, that's the only uh, that's the only way you, you can't can verify the Earth rotates just on this. Sure, you can't. I don't know what you know. What's the point of the video when he's not demonstrating the Earth rotating? Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's not doing that at all. Yeah. All he's doing is coming up with he's conjuring up lots and lots of excuses or reasons to convince people the Earth is rotating. Yeah, I know, yeah. But in fact, you know, it, everyone should know, if they live in the real world, the yeah. Earth doesn't rotate. Like I says, no, this is not a still image. It's a simulation of Earth rotating in real time. Why is, hasn't his frame of reference actually, why doesn't he actually see the Earth rotating no, but he's, in real sure. time? 
Absolutely, not yeah. as a simulation. Yeah, he's basically t- he talks about probably about the Coriolis it's effect. Fact. There's the rifle, and, and you know, yeah. probably. T- and he's got the picture of the uh, what is it? The hurricane or the tornado, yeah. hurricane, ty- typhoon, whatever it is. But all again, he's only using. Got there. He's, he's not showing you that the Earth rotates. rotates. He's not actually demonstrating rotating. the Earth rotating. Yeah, you know, got flights there. You know, blah blah blah. And he's got the full court pendulum. pendulum. We all know about full court pendulum. Do not, or full court pendulums do not demonstrate anything than what you actually observe yeah. on the pendulum. So, yeah, and that is it moves and processes yeah. as it's moving because of its design, yeah. not because the Earth is actually moving, moving or rotating. Yeah. So you know, I mean, Just click it it's, off. it's a total waste. But I, I can't understand how anyone can actually go to so much length of producing a 15, nearly a 15 minute video, video. putting so much effort when he's not really addressing the points point. raised by flat earthers yeah. in that the earth does not move. Yeah. Now, he's not addressing any of it how at all. How we know the earth rotates. But they they don't, don't know, know the earth rotates. rotates. They can't even, you know. They're using unless mental you've got, unless gymnastics. You, unless you've got mental health problems. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, of course. Yeah, he, this does this guy look as if he's got mental health problems? I'd say yes, yeah. because he's he's living in a dream world. He's not yeah. living in the real yeah. world. Yeah, basically, you know yeah. where real people live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. real people, real yeah, people. people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, of course. So you know, but, clear um, off them. Just bye. an interesting one. So bye bye, Marty Murr. Yeah, clear off. Uh, electric potential now. Here we, Here we go. go. Now we was we was Matt G. Oh, Matt G. We was in a discussion with Matt G. And he, he's he's one of these people. He's a flat earther, I think, and he's one of these people who um, um, thinks that electromagnetism and the universe is electric and all this kind of stuff. Oh, it's a bit like the bloke with the laser when he said about light being electromagnetic. Absolutely, and of course, I think so. we'll demonstrate that can, the light from a candle can be affected by a magnet. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I can't. The only oh. thing a magnet will do with a candle is affect the flame. It won't affect the, the light. Impurities. The impurities in the flame. flame. It won't affect the light. light. You know, I mean, I don't know where people get their ideas from, but do you know? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> come on. Electric potential in the air? Question mark. Simple experiment to detect. Here we go. Here we go. So the bloke, let's switch off the volume. The bloke's got um, simple setup, which simple is similar setup. to what we to. This what was what, similar to what we've done. Um, so he's got a pole. On the end of a pole is a copper uh, coil, coil, and he's attached the, co- end, the copper coil to a multimeter, and the other end of the multimeter goes into a, an anchor point in the ground. Yeah. Okay. Earth. Earth. So it's quite simple. And uh, so what he does is that he, what he does is that he raises. The uh, co- the copper coil into right. the air. He switches on his mic. Uh, oh yeah, switches on that first, of course. Yes, uh, and then raises. Wait, there, I want to. I'll oh, wait there. Yeah, yeah, so he switched it on. There you go. It's got point zero four. It's yeah. on. It's on millivolts, by the way. Millivolts. Millivolts. So he raises it in the air, and it goes. Well, it just goes. It just moves. The yeah. the dark the digital yeah. readout changes mm. from when it's on the ground. To when it's lifted into, raised into the air. Okay, yeah. it just changes. So let's have a look. Oh no, more explanation before we continue the experiment. Oh yeah, here we go. Then he gives out the the. Oh yeah, then he gives out the um the oh, I forgot the potential called. electrical potential, potential apparently the gradient every one meter one hundred volts two hundred volts at two meters three meters three hundred volts and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so he gives out his little idea as to what's going on, what causes yep. the um, the display on his multimeter to change. The science behind the the science behind it all. Absolutely, because this guy wants to want. Well, he wants to think there's electricity in the atmosphere. He yep. wants to think that. The only, the, as far as I'm concerned, the only evidence or proof, really. Of electricity in the in the atmosphere is when when lightning. it lightning is lightning, but when it's not lightning, how do we know there's electricity in the atmosphere that isn't man-made and that gen- generated through microwaves and radio waves, etc., yeah. etc.? Et yeah. You know what aren't naturally occurring? You know how do we know there are naturally occurring 
there's naturally occurring electricity or an electrical gradient in the air, well, in the atmosphere. All right. Well, let's see in if his air. digital multimeter can pick it up. Bearing in mind, he switched it to uh, millivolts. Yeah, these, these are millivolts. We're only talking millivolts. So there we go. So well, isn't got, it DC? He's uh, selected them to DC, isn't he? Yeah, he's selected to DC because that Mat G, he said that if it was picking up the uh, microwaves and everything else, it would only show AC. It wouldn't pick up DC. I wouldn't know. And I'm thinking, well, wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. really know. Because at some point, part of an AC current, it's got to be DC, isn't it? Yeah. And he's only, only for a very split... Yeah. Seconds, yeah. And, and when you think about what he's picking up, he's picking up negligible, negligible amounts. Yeah, I mean, what was it? Point. So it goes from point. It goes. It goes oh, from minus. Uh, it goes from zero. So is it is it point four, or is it? Yeah. Or is it? Yeah. Point, it's point one. Point two. Minus point two. Point nine. It goes two, up four. Point, and he goes went up to three three point two millivolts. Yeah, we're talking millivolts. We're talking, you know, we're talking amounts of voltage that are, you know, was wasting his time. I mean, who knows where it comes from? Negligible, but negligible. You know, yeah. if you're finding, um, if you're using a very fine instrumentation to detect something, then you know, yeah, you know. And one another thing, with especially his, when it's supposed to be hundred volts. Yeah, one thing with this guy is that he should do it in a variety of locations as well. He should do that underneath a pylon, underneath an an, an electrical pylon. pylon. He should also do just that just to demonstrate on the top of a mountain, uh, just to demonstrate how the man made electricity can affect his. Readings. Yeah, sure. Um, but uh, some people would argue, yeah, of course, but that his negative is shows that it's the current's only going one way, or the voltage is only going one way. But you know. We've always been sceptical about atmospheric electrical potential yeah. uh, or an electrical potential in the air, uh, the gradient. You know, We've always been sceptical skeptical of it. And if you want my honest opinion, I think it's all bullshit. I think there's no uh, electrical potential up there at all. That's my own personal view. Yeah. If somebody wants to show me that, 100 volts, if somebody can yeah. demonstrate 100 volts at one metre, 200 low. volts at... Two meters, three hundred volts at three meters. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know, I'm sold on the idea. I'll know that it's the case. Yeah. But I've not seen anything or a anyone. multimeter set at millivolts, and that just changes slightly when the when the coil moves. Yeah. I okay. Know, yeah. Isn't enough that to, to 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 for me to sell it to me. Well, to convince you to that, convince me that it's, that it's actually real. Potential gradient is real. Is is <clears throat> exists in the real world. Because, you, you know, know, as far as we're concerned, it doesn't. It, yeah, we don't think it does at all. Anyway, yeah, thanks sure. very much for so, that. So, thanks for that. Thanks, Matt G, for that one. Sure. I mean, so <clears throat> I think as soon as you put a battery in a, in your multimeter, you've created a circuit. So that circuit, a lot of the readouts could well come through when you handle the multimeter. Yeah, possibly. Or when yeah. you touch yeah. it, you disturb yeah. it. You know, just the same as a Geiger counter as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of interference. A lot of interference that can can be generated from within the circuit. Yeah, it's possible. You know, I, mean, I don't yeah. know, but, but you, know. you know, if you switched your multimeter on, oh look, and it was at hundred one meter, oh hundred volts Volt. here. Absolutely, then you sold on the idea. Absolutely, well, then it's got to be. It's but got then to be. you'd all be fried because you'd be in contact every every time oh, you right, touched yeah. a metal object. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, but they'd say, but there's no current. Well, I'm sure, yeah, but lightning, there's not much current in the lightning strike, yeah. but then that's dangerous. There's current in lightning. Not not that, yeah, yeah. But there's not a lot. 20,000 20, amps. Yeah, but, oh, well, okay. All right, but anyway, anyway but the voltage, um, the voltage, I don't know, you know. Anyway, but move I, on. I can't, <sighs> move on. I can't go, I can't go with it. I, no. I literally can't go with it. I think so it's anyway. rubbish. So you might as well get the uh, thumbnail up. Cause so we're let's now, go. Uh, Main topics. So you can understand why, really, we think science is the study of ideas. ideas. Because you've got the idea of um, the Earth rotating. The the idea that there's an electrical potential gradient. Gradient in, in, the, in the air, you know, going up to even 10,000 volts. Yeah. yeah you I know, know yeah. 100 metres, isn't yeah. it, or something like yeah. that. You know, or that water's 
made of hydrogen and oxygen. Or the air comprises oxygen and nitrogen. Absolutely, yeah. All of these are ideas. Yeah. You know, and science promotes ideas. Yeah. Science essentially is the study of ideas. ideas. Yeah. So I mean that's kind of like the main theme of our video this evening and uh, you know it, when you think about it, it does hold there is some truth in that isn't there yeah you know because science does purport pr promote ideas yeah. all the, t all the all time, time. Yeah. Uh, space travel to mars quantum theory quantum theory they're all ideas atoms molecules they're all ideas that's all they are mm. and people are sucked into this school universities ma major educational establishments yeah. over uh, in many many countries um, but there you go, you know, it just goes to show how many people live, want to live a fantasy, want to live an, in ideas, really, you yeah. know. Anyway. But, so what should we do well, next? We, should we, we do got our to, wire got wall? To show people our wire wall. Let's do our wire wall. Here we go. Now, here we go. Uh, we've got it there. There we go. Let's switch off there. So we've weighed, um, this is, uh, this is, Put soaking wire wool in water and then popping them in in a jar filled with oxygen and a jar filled with air yeah. mm. and seeing what happens, you know. So we've basically removed the necessity of using an acid, an acid like vinegar, a mild acid like vinegar. Yeah. So we'll weigh that. So one, you can see that we've uh, soaking the wire wool. There's one. Go on, move it. Let's move, move it across. across. Wait, uh, yeah, we're soaking the other one, and then there you go. And then we're just uh, getting rid of the excess, and we're going to weigh them. So this one is um, 11.426, I think it ends up being. 11.42, or 424. 424, there you go. Yeah, 424. 424, that one. We put that in the oxygen jar. We put that one in the oxygen. Or the jar that will, will or the, contain. Or the, the jar oxygen. that contains dry, concentrated dry, dry air. air. And then we. this one is 11.330. Mm. Yeah, 330. Yeah, that's what I've marked it down as. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, 11.330. Oh, yeah, of course. And then there that goes in the jar filled with air. And so there we go. We're going to fill up the jar with oxygen. Here we go. There's the uh, jar f being filled up with oxygen. We're just going to slip over the balloon skin over the lid of the air jar. There you go. It's like putting on your sock in the morning, isn't it? Absolutely, of course, yeah. So there's the air jar done. And we're just waiting right there. Yeah, and there's the... We don't need to show testing the oxygen, do no. we? Uh, so there's the um, jar filled with concentrated dry air, a.k.a. oxygen, with the blue balloon skin over the top, sealing it all in. So we yeah. leave that for for about a week, don't we, or something? Yeah. Have we done the... Um, there you go. Oh, yeah. Now you can see. Now this is after a week, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been after a week, and you can see there is some depression, a little depression in the balloon skin... With the air, yeah, I think you get then you get a bit of card or something. Yeah, I get I get a straight edge just to put over the top so you can see uh, how well and the wire wall looks similar. Yeah, they do. They it's surprising similar. actually. Yeah, sure. It, the acid makes a big difference. So there's a bit of cardboard. You can see the depression on there, only very slight. Yeah, uh, we was expecting a lot more, but uh, no. we didn't get it, did we? No. In fact, and there's the wire wall. Still looks like wire wall. There's some We've rust got in rust. there. We've got rust there. There you go. So there's old, uh, what's his name? Old Jason and Mac talking about Jason, the old wire Mackie. wall is coated with oil. Yeah. Which is why you need to use the vinegar to strip the oil from the surface so then the oxygen can attack the metal. It's total rubbish. It's total rubbish yeah. because we've got rust there. We've, we've got, got rust. rust in both jars. Yeah, there's a bit of rust on the bottom of that. Oxygen jar, I'm sure. In yeah, well, you can see yeah. it on the side. It's a bit there, so it's pretty okay. So let's just move this on. And uh, let's have a way. <sighs> now, we, we, we think that, um, or last time, we thought that the jar of oxygen, the wire wool in the jar of oxygen, will be lighter than the, uh, than the wire wall in the jar of air. 
Oh, we? well, yeah. That's what we thought last week or last time we, 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 we did this. So we got 10.888, and that was in the jar of oxygen, which is lost 0.536 of a gram. Yeah. So there you go. So that's that one. And the next one, wait there. I don't want to move it along, otherwise, I'll end up going foot past the. Point. You want to show the video of the is the difference in the wire wall on when we use the acid. Oh, well, I can't do There's that because I've got to find it. Oh, can't well. do it. So, so you, you can see the rust there. You can see the there. rust. That's uh, there's the rust there that's occurred. Yeah, rust. On Jason the wire Mac, wall. if you're watching, there you go. To rust. Absolutely, of course. Rust. Yeah. So there we go, and we're going to weigh this, and we've got a grand total of 10.407. Which means there's a reduction of 0.923. So it's nearly one gram. So there's more weight loss with the wire wool in the jar of air than the jar of oxygen. Yeah. So we didn't get the results we thought we'd get. We thought the jar of the the wire wool in the jar of air would be heavier yeah. than the wire wool yeah. in seem, the jar of and, oxygen. And there does seem to be more rust in the jar of air than in the jar of oxygen. Yeah, absolutely, of course. There's only yeah. some very small... Very small patches. Patches and of it. that smearing of it, whereas, whereas there, here, you can see it's heavily... Well, it's, more, it's a lot heavier there. You've yeah. got a lot more spot, spotting of rust... And you would have thought it would be other, the, be the other way around Damn, because yeah. oxygen allegedly is supposed to absorb, react with the steel, to with the iron to pr- produce iron oxide so rust. I, you know, all that's total bullshit. Rubbish, you know? yeah. It's got to be rubbish, you know, because the wire wall here on the left should be covered in, should really be covered in uh, rust. rust, but yeah. it, it's not, you know. And we should have seen a deflection in the balloon, but we didn't, didn't see that yeah, at all. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. So... Although we can't conclude much to this demonstration, what we can conclude is something is is that we didn't use acid, mm. and it's it's very clear to us that the acid plays a big part a big part in these reactions. Yeah, that's something we can conclude. So if you quickly get up a, a oh a video online about a percent oxygen. In oh the yeah, air. of course. Yeah, wait there. Percent oxygen in the air. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Basically, what we what yeah, we this one here. Should <coughs> we do the one on the top? What about that one? No, the one on the top. Similar. We've showcased this video before. He dips some uh, steel wool in some acetic acid. Yeah. Wait there. Yeah. White vinegar. There we go. Yeah. He's he's put it in white vinegar. He's damped it out of it. Oh, there yeah, you go. There's his vinegar. Acetic acid. There you go. He's dipped it in his petri dish. There you go. Popped it in damped his it test tube and popped it in the test tube. We think it's the acid that creates the conditions. Yeah, sure. The plays a part in plays what a big part. part. Yeah, plays a huge part in, in the rise in the water level. Yeah, we we think the acid uh, plays a huge part in. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, um, yeah. So you've got to ask yourself: Does the oxygen, if you had an oxygen uh, jar filled with oxygen, does the oxygen really absorb the absorb into the acid? React with the acid. React with not the acid. with the metal, or not with the metal. Yeah, you know, you've we've you've really got to ask yourself this. I mean, really, this isn't a demonstration at all to show there's oxygen as a constituent, constituent of, of air. air. Yeah. It doesn't do that. But what it does is that it's, it's a contrivance to get people to think there is oxygen as, as a, a constituent, constituent in the air. Yeah. Okay. It's all rubbish. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they've got the nerve to put up these videos. Yeah. Which are total rubbish, you know. They're, they are t- literal rubbish. Rubbish, yeah. You know, percent oxygen in the air. What, what oxygen? Yeah. There is anyway. no oxygen in, in the air, anyway. in my opinion. So I think we've got, we got, we got some more to do because we, we wouldn't mind trying it with some sulfamic acid. Yeah, well, I don't, well, I don't think we need... Well, I don't think... We don't need well, to. The thing is, what's interesting is if you use a much stronger acid, but then you'd get a much stronger re- result, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, 
Anyway, anyway, but uh, so we've got we did that one, and uh, I suppose we should show our ones on. Oh, that's it. What about that ones on on? Yeah, that's our carbon. steel wall. So, we, but we've got some other ones, other videos to show people things yeah, very, that we've done. Yeah, very quickly, right there. One, yeah. two, three. Yeah, we had this set up. Um, it's a glass tube, and it's got some activated carbon in it, and we're passing. In this demonstration, we're passing air from a uh, pump over the activated carbon as we're heating it, as it's being heated. Well, not at the moment. Yeah, not at the moment. And the the end of the pipe, the airstream, goes over the activated, heated activated carbon, goes goes through a pipe, and um, will either turn should turn lime water milky and extinguish the flame because we're producing mm. CO two. Yeah. If you heat activated carbon, you should produce CO two. Mm. So uh, one thing in this demonstration, so we've got the setup, the glass tube. There's the candle in the jar. Yeah. What we decided to do in this demonstration was that we decided to put some lime water in two test tubes. Sure. Which is what we're doing now. There we go. And Let's one just we move it along. Yeah, one we blow through just to make sure that it is active. Absolutely, absolutely. There we go. We're blowing through this to show everyone that it go. does turn milky. On because we have a different way of knocking up our our lime water, don't yeah. we? But this is to determine the presence of a salt. So sure. it's going lime. Uh, the lime water is turning milky because I'm exhaling, in, my, in our view, an ammoniated salt. salt. Yeah. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So that's that's and that's what's precipitated out in the lime water. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So, so now what we do is we take the tube straight from the air pump, pump. and place it into the other. Absolutely. Test so tube. you can see the uh, constant flow of airstream coming um, coming out of the pipe, bubbling through the lime water. Because the last thing we, we want is to do this demonstration, and it would turn lime water milky in any situation. In any situation, yeah, sure. So we're just passing the air through. Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, I don't think we get. You can't really see much there. No. Anyway, but so uh, so there's the there's the. Oh look, uh, look here we go. Oh look, looky there. Look, would you turning believe? milky? What, what happened there? Oh, there, there you yeah. go. Look, it's turned milky. Okay. Now that that what we were doing was just pump, uh, passing air passing air through the pump into the. Uh, Oh, over the the, we were passing it over the, through the system. Oh, through the system, yeah. The test tube. So, so it makes you think. So, what's the point in heating up the carbon? Yeah, what's the point in heating you're up get the carbon? Same results? If you're going to get absolutely, of course. So, lucky we tested that because what we ended up doing was that um, we put the pipe straight from the pump into the lime water. Yeah, we put the absolutely, of course, straight from the pump because in. you're having to eliminate variables, variables that could affect the results that you'll get. Mm. So there, there it goes again, and you can clearly oh, it's see going, going it's gone milky. And here's here's a, here's our pump. Uh, so what we did was that we we ended up disregarding the pump, and well, we uh, changed it. We we used another pump, which yeah. we used this one. But a lot of people would would if Simon Dan Frying Pan Dan was watching this video, yeah. He said, there you go. There's proof that there's CO two in the air. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. But in our understanding, because the lime water's turned milky. But in our understanding, all it demonstrates is that the that there's a salt in the air. Sure, or well, there has to be, uh, or the pump, the pump is decomposing, and bits, little, little tiny bits of it is being passed into the lime water. Absolutely, of course, yeah, because uh, yeah, different pumps. The only way you can do it ways. is if you have a manual pump. And you're you're blowing air into lime water constantly <sighs> to determine whether the the salt is coming from the air or from the pump. Anyway, right. Yeah. Anyway, but anyway, so what we're doing here is we've got this is from the pump. I would imagine it's straight into the lime water. Yeah, and it's not. It's not. It doesn't look as if it's going, does it? Oh. Or, or it takes a lot longer. It takes it? longer. It takes a lot longer to actually go. You can see it's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do? So what we do is that we start heating up the activated carbon. Oh, the only thing we can do in this demonstration is see how quickly it turns lime water milky. Okay. Yeah. If it turns really quickly, if it turn, if the lime water turns quickly, 
milky. If it turns milky quickly, or quicker, then we know that it's not down to the pump. Yeah. But both pumps will eventually turn lime water milky. Yeah, basically. Sure. And we think that's obviously down to the pump, not the air. Well, well you still can't. Well, I can't, but I, I don't think it's the air. That's just rubbish. So we're heating up the uh, activated carbon, which is in the pipe. And so we've... Well, there could be a salt in the air. So there we go. So, oh, well, there could be a salt in the air. I don't know. I don't know. You'll have to, you'll have to test it. So the, the lime water here is turning a lot milkier quicker. Quicker. Yeah, it's, it's turning... Yeah, it's turning very quickly, milky, that's for sure. We're heating up the activated carbon there, as you can see. Now let's move this along. There we go. It's even glowing inside there. Yeah. Does it look white in places? Yeah, it oh, looks white, white in places, in places as well. Look, you can see it mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that looks quite uh, quite good in focus there. And we can see, now Wonder. we've put the pipe in the jar that has the candle in it, mm. and the flame's not going out. No. So this is this is this is, was a conundrum, wasn't it? Yeah. Because it turned lime water milky, but it didn't put the flame out, did it? Or but it wasn't filling up the jar with carbon dioxide with, with a gas that would put the flame, flame out. out. Yeah, sure. It wasn't doing that for some reason. I don't know why. But so we tried that. We I mean we're heating it for quite some time. Yeah, we went for about ten minutes, didn't we? Uh, ten ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here we go. This is uh, we're continuing on. You know, so the lime water's turned milky, and we're heating up the activated carbon. It's turning, passing the air over from the pump. Yeah, and the, the thing is, is that with the air passing over, you're getting little bits from the carbon that's uh, from the activated carbon. Sure, that's being carried along with, with the it, airstream, which should put out the flame. Yeah, sure, but it's not. It's not happening, is it? It's not happening. So you've got moisture at the end there, obviously. Yeah. And there you go. Uh, it's not happening. We 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 were there quite some time. There we go. We're yeah. Nearly halfway through here. Look, look it's, it's mostly it's mostly turned to salt. Salt, yeah. Salt and clay, because you need yeah. clay in activated carbon there's as your binder. binder, or you need a or there's a binder there yeah. to bind all of the activated carbon together. That you need the glue. So we're heating it up there, and no, no luck at all, was it? No. You know, we couldn't get the flame oh, wherever the a, flame is. Just show a clip of the of the flame. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Yeah, the, all, the we seems, all we seem to have is just the... Uh, that's all we... Wait there. Can we do that at the end? Yeah, yeah it's still there. It's You know, the flame just wouldn't go out. It hasn't gone out there. We We changed the... The, the location of the pipe inside the jar uh, on a few occasions and you, we're continuing to heat but the flame wouldn't go out no. and I think in the background it, you could see the um, could you not see the um, the uh, the didgeridoo what's that oh wait there where's that gone where's the uh, oh, oh there I'm waiting for the I want to show the um, there was a bit where we showed the I've lost it. I've lost it now. I want, oh, there. There we go. That's better. I've got the thing. I want to show... There you go. You've got the pipe. You can actually see... I think not from there. Yeah, the flame's just not going out at all. I want to see if we can get a glimpse of the... the lime water. The right. test tube with the lime water. But I don't think we've... Uh, I don't think I've I showed that. I don't, I don't know what you're trying to do. Sure. There's, yeah, you can see the... Yeah, they're they're behind, aren't they? That's just, yeah, the light, the the uh, yeah, you can't see the test tubes. The test tubes turn the test tube turn lime water we've turn milk. Shown that. Sure, but uh, I want to show. Oh, oh, there, oh there it is. There's yeah, we put that. Oh, we put it in. Oh, there you go. Look, we we're, we're putting it in. We're putting this, putting it in lime water now. And you can see that it does turn milky quite quickly. So it can't be down to the pump. It's going very quickly. Yeah, no, yeah. So we're yeah. producing the gas that some people would call as being CO2. Okay, we're heating the activated carbon in the glass tube. The lime water's going milky. 
as we can clearly see once it gets into focus there, milk it. Yeah, yeah. But the flame, I'm glad we found this bit, oh, right. but the flame isn't going, going out. out. It's not yeah. being extinguished at all. So, you know, I mean, when you get when you get a demonstration that's supposed to be that's supposed to give you oh, right, yeah, a double yeah. positive yeah. and you only get a positive and a negative, you've really got to ask yourself, well, you know, something seriously wrong oh, with yeah. the the understanding. Yeah. This flame will not go out. Yeah, because that glass should be filling up with CO2. Too. And yet it's not. It's not doing that at all. At all. So something yeah. seriously wrong with, um, well, I can't say anything seriously wrong with our apparatus, but well, some, no. something's got to no. be wrong with the understanding that activated carbon, when you heat it up, gives off carbon dioxide. Yeah. You know, yeah. sure. Anyway. But anyway, yeah. so, but uh, I mean, it's all interesting stuff anyway, to say the least. But, uh, or to say the least, yeah, sure. But there you go, you know, that's it. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there you go, just over an hour. Just over an hour, there you go. So oh, there you go, look at that. Oh, we've got oh, some man, lovely, uh, got some lovely thoughts for uh, for some new demonstrations then. Yeah. And if you'd like, uh, if you've got any uh, uh, things that you'd like us to look at, any videos that you've come across. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. Means drop an email yeah, or, or something. If you've seen some uh, proof. Drop a comment below. Yeah, if, you, if you've seen proof there's oxygen in the air, you know, a video that actually demonstrates oxygen yeah. being a constituent of yeah. the air naturally. Yeah. Or if you've actually got a frame of reference where you're external to the Earth and you can actually see the Earth rotating, then please let us yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, if you can actually go to, I don't know, outer space and right. actually um, look at the Earth rotating, that would be great to yeah. show us uh, some kind of video that you've done it. Yeah. Not that people like NASA have allegedly done it, or the European Space Agency, or, yeah, or Brian Cox, or China, or, or BBC, whoever. Absolutely, but you, you've, you've done it, yeah. Absolutely, of course, yeah. That'd be great, you know. So yeah, there, there you have it. So thanks ever so much, and always remember till next time. If something doesn't make sense, like oxygen being a constituent Just of the air. air. Oh, and nitrogen being 78% of the air as well. Absolutely, of when course. Really, all you can do is just, all you need to do is just put the air through a certain process and you'll make nitrogen. nitrogen. Absolutely, you can make nitrogen. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Or if you think that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. Oh, right, yeah. If you think that so the earth rotates, you know. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. If you think the earth's a spinning ball. Mm. If you think plants photosynthesize and release oxygen in their natural habitat. Mm. Of course. Yeah, if you think there's an electrical potential gradient. Absolutely, of course. volts every, yeah. every metre you go every up. Me absolutely, of course, yes. And yet no one has shown you it on a device. Yeah, or if you think that a candle, the light from a candle flame is electromagnetic. Oh, right, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Or if you think that atoms and molecules exist. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, you know. Yeah, that's, that's another thing. You know, if you've got a, a, a really strong set of neodymium magnets out at home, you know, get a candle, light the candle flame, and then all you do is just place the two magnets either side, either of, the side candle flame. of the candle. You know, obviously, you know, if you've got to secure them because they're going to be so strong. Sure. And see if that the, the light, the light is affected. Yeah, we're not talking about the flame. We're talking about the light. light the light from that candle. Whether is the light, affected? how can you actually demonstrate that light is affected by a by a, a, a magnetic field? Don't know. Let us know. Let, Let us know, know how, you'd do, it, how you know. you'd do it. How you'd do it? Yeah. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. It's all bollocks, isn't it? Of course. Yep. So thanks ever so much, and we'll see you next, next time. time. Okay. Bye. Tada. The Earth isn't round. It's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat everywhere.